Hello, hello, Internet, and welcome to a vlog. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I've decided to make a new vlog because of, um, because of recent events, you might say. Uh, this vlog is about my Sherlock Holmes audiobooks. Now, I've done two Sherlock Holmes audiobooks so far, the um, Orange Pips and the Six Napoleons, and I've got a lot of, uh, a lot of, positive feedback on that. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad you you liked it and you enjoyed it. Um, and I also got uh, a lot of flack for not making new episodes. Um, my problem was the first recording, the Orange Pips, I did with uh, Windows 7 and Movie Maker. And I was not happy with the result. Not at all. The audio quality was um, abysmal. It was just bad, so I decided to dump that. Um, I left I left the recording on because, okay, I did it, it's finished, and seemingly you like it, but um, I wasn't too happy with that. So um, I tried the second story, The Six Napoleons, with the QuickTime player and um, Mac OS 10 point nine point something. And um, the audio was a lot better, but the problem was that uh, QuickTime player recordings start to stutter after about 30 minutes. After 30 minutes you have, um, I don't know, this kind of stuttering in the audio recording, which is extremely irritating. So you have to stop after 20 minutes, then make another go for another 20 minutes, and then the rest, and then you have to go into iMovie, which is a nightmare. And paste it all together to stick it, to in, make it into a whole movie. I don't like that. I don't usually cut or edit anything. I just record. I do one read, one go, finish. That's it. Fine. So, no. Um, I wasn't too happy with that either. I mean, I've recorded it. It's up. So, um, I then stopped recording Sherlock Holmes audiobooks for a while because I was, I was searching for the right um, tool to record them. And I think I now found it. Uh, it's a freeware. It runs on Windows 7. And it's great. The, the audio quality was great. I could just uh, grab a, a, some, I could just capture part of the screen and put a picture on it and then just read the story. And uh, I did some tests and I was, I was uh, very happy with that freeware. I'll, I'll put the link, the download link below. Unfortunately, you can't just download it. You have to give your email address and then even register. Although it's for free, but... <sighs> but it's a great, it's a great software. So I think, okay, like, if you want my email address, I'll give you my email address. Fine. I've got lots of email addresses. So, okay, good, happy. And uh, that was... Uh, uh, on, on the last weekend, and I was so happy with it. It was late at night, but I thought, like, hey, this works great. Let's let's record. Let's do an audiobook. Let's do it right now. And uh, I have a special Sherlock Holmes shelf where I have all my Sherlock Holmes editions and stuff. And I grabbed a book uh, without even looking, and it was New Sherlock Holmes Adventures, um, which contains stories... Sherlock Holmes Adventures, written by other authors, so not by uh, Arthur Conan Doyle, so yeah, but, and I can't recommend the book, really, because a lot of the stories are just poppycock, they're hogwash, they're terrible, they're bad, they don't make any sense at all, but there are a few few good stories in there, and one in particular. It's an absolute gem. I totally love it. It's great. It's got everything you want. Uh, I would even go so far as to have... It has a touch of... Uh, yeah, it has a touch of in internationalism that um, the original stories actually lack. It has this... Eastern Asian touch of Sherlock Holmes being in Sri Lanka, or Ceylon, as it was called back then. Uh, it's, it's a great story. I just love it. And so I thought, like, hey, this story by, by um, Eric Brown, who's a great author. He does uh, um, 
actually he's famous for his science fiction. If you don't know him, check out his science fiction uh, publications. They're great. Um, I'll, I'll put a link down below to his website where he does some blog stuff as well. A uh, great read, for example, is his frustration uh, about the movie industry. Uh, read it. Go buy his stuff. It's great. So, um, yeah, I, I took this, read it in one go, finished it and thought like, great, this is, this is a good audiobook. Um, but uh, I, I then realized, actually, while, while getting ready to upload, that um, there's copyright on it. Because, of course, uh, as you know, in Europe at least, copyright uh, ceases to be 75 years after the death of the person who created the piece of art. So in Arthur Conan Doyle's case, all his stories are uh, for free. There's no copyright on them, but... This story was from 1997, The Vanishing of the Atkinsons. So there is copyright on it. So I thought, oh, that's not... I know, it's the internet age, and most of you don't think much of copyright. But actually, I do. I think, because what you have to keep in mind is that people who create something, art, software, whatever it is, they live by it. So... They need money. They need to get paid for it. Um, on the other hand, I thought, well, I'm, I'm, I'm a dilettante. I'm, I'm an amateur. I'm not making any money off this. And I'm actually, I'm, F, I'm pushing traffic towards his website. And I'm also, I'm also making his story more prominent. Because I studied English literature. And nobody knows it. Nobody knows this story, and I think it's it's a shame because it's a great story, which is why I did it. And I then went to his website and tried to contact him, but you can't because there's no link saying contact Eric Brown. Uh, at least I didn't find anything, so I thought, okay, um, let's let's try the publishers, which are Carol and Graf in New York, and I found out to my surprise that they no longer exist. Um, which is too bad. They had a lot of uh, great publications, fiction and non-fiction, but okay. Their successes, um, some media group, uh, uh, publishing house. Um, I wrote them an email, but they never responded. Uh, it's, it's been a, a week now since I contacted them, and I didn't hear anything from them. So I thought, okay, um, I'll just risk it. I'll risk it. I'll upload the video, and if anybody has uh, any grievances over this, um, I'll, I'll put a text in the video description and below saying, like, if, if you are Eric Brown or if you are a, a member of the whoever owns this copyright, and if you don't like what I did here, then please contact me and I'll take it down immediately. So I uploaded it, and... Um, a few days later, I was back on Eric Brown's website once more and read some of his blog articles. And on the right-hand side, all of a sudden, I saw the name of his agent. And I clicked on it, and I got to the website of the agent. The agent actually had an email address. So I thought, hey, hey, uh, why not do it properly? Do the right thing. Don't just, like, I don't know just ignore copyright and just leave it on, because I guess I could have. I'm, I'm quite sure nobody really would have noticed. There is no professional audio book of this story. I wish there were, because I tried to buy one for years. There's not. So, um, yeah, I, uh, I contacted him, and basically what he said was, oh my God, you shouldn't have done this. I'm going to talk to Eric about this. And then he got back to me and said, well, I contacted Eric and he was horrified by what you've done. I, I don't know what he means by that. Maybe he didn't like the video. Maybe I didn't read it the way he wanted this to be read. Or maybe I, I, I assume he didn't even look at the video. He just said, oh, somebody's using my story without paying me. Um, I don't like that. Tell him to take it off. So I've taken it off. I've already received three personal messages from people saying like, hey, was it there yesterday? I want to see it again. Where is it? What have you done? And uh, I've taken it off. And I ask for your understanding. 
but it is within his rights because it's his story. He wrote it. I mean, of course, there's a character in there which he didn't invent, so you might say, hey, hey, look who's talking. But it was uh, legal for him to do so because Sherlock Holmes was no longer under copyright. So, yeah, I could write a Sherlock Holmes story. You could write a Sherlock Holmes story. Hmm. Nobody would sue us, certainly not Arthur Conan Doyle, uh, and not his publishers as well. But in this case, since the story is from 1997, I think, yes, it's his story. If he says, take it down, I will take it down. I have taken it down. Don't be angry with me. Don't be angry with him. Um, I know some of you may argue, hey, that's not very clever of him. And I think I would agree, because... Um, I don't think he is making a lot of money with this story by now, if ever. And I would certainly have moved some traffic onto his website. And of course, I would have made this story of his more popular, which might have inspired people to read more of his stories. So yes, it's, it's, it's a thin line between do I allow this to get the... the PR, the attention, or do I not allow this in order to, um, yeah, defend my individual uh, property? Uh, he chose to do uh, it this way, and I respect that. So, yeah, I'm, it's too bad. I actually sent um, an email back to the agent saying, look, if, if this is a matter of uh, simply a license, maybe we could... Uh, agree on something, maybe if, it, if he wants, I don't know, normal license for a standard uh, software, something between, I don't know, 10 euros and 79 euros, maybe, like if he says, yeah, okay, give me 50 bucks and I will allow you to, to keep this audiobook on, um, I might do a crowdfunding, <laughs> or I just might, I might just pay it and say, okay, here you go. Uh, it's a good story because I love the story. I want the story to be up. I want you all to know about the story, but oh well. That's just the way it is. So um, I'll wait for him to, uh, to uh, get back to me, but I'm, I guess it's, um, it's not going to happen. And uh, apart from those uh, few lucky people who actually heard the story during the last few days, um, yeah, I guess the rest will not hear it. I'm very sorry, but you can read it for yourself. Um, the problem is, like, the book is not good, so, um, hmm, don't really have a good solution for that because the story is great, but um, many of the other stories are not, so, hmm. All right, I just wanted to tell you, so there are more original stories coming up. Um, I've got half of... Um, 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 half of the Noble Bachelor flying around on my Mac. I had done the whole thing, but like I said, quick time after 30 minutes. Same with the Six Napoleons, started to stutter. So I'm going to do the other half, glue them together and publish it. And then I'm going to tell quick time to suck it. And I'm going to do the rest with my new program. And uh, yeah, there's more Sherlock Holmes coming up. And I'm, I'm going to try to do some more, um, yeah, Stories from Sherlock Holmes, which were not by Arthur Conan Doyle, because there are a few good ones, but I'll take even greater care to get permission before I do so. If I ever get permission. Uh, well, we'll see. All right. Thanks for listening. Pike is signing off.